Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lawland. We are so honored to welcome Sharon Blinn to the show. She is a cancer survivor, an activist, and an incredible actress. Thank you for being with us Thank today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Your journey of personal transformation is so incredibly inspiring. Would you mind mm, thank you. sharing it with us? Uh, sure. Gosh, where to begin? Well, I had ovarian cancer. I was diagnosed at age 28 and uh, came completely out of nowhere, quote unquote, mm -hmm. <laughs> as you guys would probably call it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I went through down that path and got several appointments later, figured out I had ovarian cancer. There's no, there's no test. Uh, so ultimately I had to have surgery and then they look at it under the microscope and they give you the diagnosis. And then that's when all my research began and I didn't even know really much about ovarian cancer. It's not really talked about so much. Um, but then part of the uh, effects, of course, of going through treatment include hair loss. And that was one of the initial things after losing part of my ovary and learning what does that mean for a woman, a 28-year-old woman. Um, and then losing my hair, and I had really long hair, and it was part of my sort of hippie jazz chick <laughs> trademark look. And I was like, okay, who am I without my hair? And then feeling a little troubled and annoyed that I even had to think about that question while I'm fighting for my life. And so I just, along the way, I met women who had a harder time with losing hair or even uh, it, it, then losing breasts or reproductive organs or having cancer. So I just thought, okay, there's why that's such a weird out of balance thing with just the hair. Why is that so powerful? Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I realized the power of, of images to transform mm -hmm. how we see ourselves. Because I didn't see myself out there, like in TV and movies and things in general, but also specifically when they're portraying someone going through cancer who's always a, a lot older than me and also wearing a, a scarf that didn't fit very well and gray and mm, knocking on heaven's door kind of look. And I just, I didn't look that way or feel that way. And I just felt like, okay, why is everything around me making me feel worse about myself? Right. Mm -hmm. So that was when the little spark started of, you know, I'd like to do something to put other images out there that's, that reflect me and uh, the greater us that can be a positive reference and sort of a, a visual societal hug so that we need so much. Mm. Hair is a big identity for a lot of women and men, yes. and uh, it's a huge identity. Yes. It's a fascinating. Yes. Like, but men have the option to shave, you know, when, when certain yeah. very famous people started doing it, it sort of, you know, but women weren't right. given the option of, oh, well, if you're totally. starting to lose your hair for whatever reason, right. I'll just shave it off. Well, you, know? if you have a beautiful <laughs> head, you know, it's like I got a good head of lucky. Lucky. <laughs> 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 I do think it is interesting to, to take it and spin it and say, this is, you know, this is not only just for cancer, but also just an image that could be in general in itself. In right? sickness uh -huh. and in health, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell sure. us about Bald is Beautiful and what your mission is. Mm -hmm. Well, when I started it, I just, I had read stories from other people that kind of helped me. And so I thought, well, why, why would my voice not be helpful for someone else? And I was just learning about this worldwide interwebs thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy <laughs> thing out there. An analog girl thing. in the digital world. So it's like, people okay. are using that thing. Mm -hmm. Really, this is, this is 2000. This is before social media. This is, you know, before any of that really was so much more yeah. ubiquitous than it is now. So I just thought, okay, I want to, I would thought about a book, but then I, okay, well, there's a faster way. I can just kind of write some of the things of my story and just put it out there on the web. And a friend of mine helped me build this very basic, you know, simple website to share certain stories about um, what I went through is emotionally, but also things like for caregivers and how they can sort of participate and not feel helpless. Everybody kind of feels helpless in the journey and they're all along with us. Um, so my, like my sister helped, you know, she decorated my hospital rooms to make them more joyful and upbeat mm -hmm. and had pictures like along the bedside. So when I would be laying in bed, I could just turn my head and see faces of people who love me mm -hmm. next to me. We're twins. So that was also like, mm -hmm. yeah, very interesting journey too. Yeah. Um, identical twins. And we found out we we're identical because of my cancer. We took a genetic test. We were told we were fraternal our oh, whole wow. lives. Oh, wow. an, we don't have the BRCA1 and 2 gene, but oh, by the way, you're identical. So that wow. was like... Wow. So, so we were just talking in the last interview that how, you know, disease is a blessing in, in weird different disease. ways, right? Yes. yes. So <laughs> for you, how do you view your cancer now? Uh, it's... I kind of immediately saw it as an opportunity to learn. Even even visual exercises I was going to give myself during chemo. Like first I had it was a carb carboplatin and taxol with it. So it was like Captain Carboplatin in the Taxol Army, or going in to kill the cancer. And I was like, but that's like a lot of anger and violence inside my body. Mm -hmm. So then I decided Indiana Jones. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to ex excavate these tumors and these things, mm -hmm. and we're going to then we're going to examine them and what can we learn from them? It was sort of this. I'm a nerd too, so I was like, <laughs> okay, what am I going to learn about myself? And yeah. I also 
also did a lot of research about complementary therapies. I worked with a medical intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, that work actually continued for about 10 years. Oh, wow. And did some Chinese herbs and acupuncture and meditation. Learned about all this stuff that I didn't, I knew about, but didn't really actively. It sort of was there, but now it's like front activation mm -hmm. in my mind and my, right. my life. So we how did this fuel you creatively in your journey as an actress? I wasn't an actor before that. Oh, wow. So it it was the beginning because I said, okay, well, how do I get the image out there? And that's, you know, TV, movies, print, whatever. Mm -hmm. My sister's an actor. She's been doing it for a long time and mostly stage and avant-garde, independent, like yeah. really quirky stuff that is insane and, and powerful and amazing. And she actually gave me my first gig. We did a performance called Off the Muff, a, an ensemble of women doing first person autobiographical. And I was going wow. through treatment at the time and I was doing a lot of journaling about my ovaries, letters to my ovaries, farewell, <laughs> farewell letters to my ovaries. I love that. And things like that. So I, with, that was the first, uh, my first entree, I white knuckled it through the whole. I love, that. I love that you call it an actor vest. Actor vest. Yes. Yes. I believe the only reason to really be in Hollywood <laughs> is what, because whether you're just expanding consciousness and having somebody see a new perspective of a complete, you know, yes. dark character, or whether you're bringing light through bringing awareness and consciousness. For me, it's all. Yes, that's you know, the fuel behind what yeah. I do is is my activism. So I just said, well, that's I'm not just an actor, and I never acted before, so that's I'm an actor vest. Well, it <laughs> clearly fueled you well into the market. Marvel Universe. Yes. <laughs> oh Can God. we talk yeah. about that for a second? What yes, has please. that journey been like for you? That's just, I can't even, on every level, professionally, I'm also a Marvel fan, geek, nerd, since childhood, read comic books and cartoons, like, so all that. So personally, professionally, and for Bald is Beautiful, because the kind of platform, like being and talking to you, you lovely, wonderful mm -hmm. people and your viewers, mm -hmm. uh, being able to share that message, that's the whole reason I got involved with doing what I'm doing. So it's extraordinary on every possible level. And, you know, I got to be married to Ben Mendelsohn, which was pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> that's awesome. And work with Brie Larson right. and all that is amazing. So if you had, I'm sure you've answered this question a million times, but indulge me, please, for a moment. <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? My superpower is empathy. Oh, ah, wow. Yes. And I have thought about that a lot. Uh, and my, 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 my religion is compassion, and my, my, my superpower is empathy. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like if we do everything from a sense of self-love and care and compassion, every act that we do, if that's where it's centered and fueled from, then we will be all right. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's profound. Mm -hmm. Would you have given that same answer before the disease, before all the modalities you used and before acting? Uh, probably in a different context. I was in the music business and I was my whole, my, the whole fuel behind what I was doing with that was bringing, bringing great art to the world to, 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 because art is such a powerful tool to, to bring people together, to unite mm -hmm. and inspire people. And I was in the music business in, in the jazz biz in, in New York City. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the reason I was doing that too, just love of music and wanting to bring that kind of thing to other people. It was really kind of like, I, I've always been a behind the scenes person doing that. And now I'm just doing it like kind of the inverted version of that, yeah. being in front of the camera, which is, I, you, if you would have told me that yeah. 10 years ago, that, <laughs> that part of would have been no way. Right. Staying bald and acting, no way. So what do you think is the biggest message for your active Activism. activism, activism. Well, the bald is beautiful motto is always smile from the inside out. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's no matter what is going on on the outside, what we're feeling inside is what radiates the world. All the layers that we are told that we have to put on and, and to look and conform to certain ideas of standards of what's attractive and beautiful and whole, underneath it all, we can't cover up what's going on inside. And that's what people will read no matter what. For so sure. always Absolutely. smile from the inside out. So Thank beautiful. you for that. I love Sharing that. your time and light. Please tell everyone how they can follow your journey and get involved with Bald. Oh, of course, uh, baldisbeautiful.org is my website, dot .org. Uh, and on Instagram, I'm at bald.is.beautiful. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And there's a Facebook blog, Bald is Beautiful blog on Facebook. I love that. Oh. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about how you actually healed. We had um, uh, the Gores on, Kelly Gores for Heal, and a bunch of people on the documentary, that, and having mm -hmm. spontaneous remission. And cancer, how did you actually heal? Um, well, it wasn't spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was like nine factors that they found that, you know, of course, we, we believe yeah. as, as a doctor divinity, I believe that going to doctors is good and doing all the other I believe stuff both. Saying, you know, yeah. my uh -huh. sister actually went through a, a thyroid thing and she did all non-traditional, quote unquote, uh, healing modalities. And so I was always interested in it and believe that it works. It's just 
everything I read, nothing was specific to ovarian cancer. So I wanted to do, you know, truly holistic. Western is not bad, evil Western medicine either. Mm -hmm. So combining both, and I, I saw a Chinese medical healer who had an MD as well. And her, she, she molded the program to support my immune system. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to go through chemo, which attacks the immune system, ironically, uh, support kidney, liver, and other things that get toxins mm -hmm. out of the body. So let the chemo in there to do what it's going to do and then get it out of the body faster. Mm -hmm. So I did ac Chinese herbs and acupuncture. I did yoga and meditation. Mm -hmm. I did laugh therapy, which for me was just <laughs> renting funny movies. <laughs> doing anything funny. Yes. Uh, you know, and and visual visualization exercises and learning to work out. I'd never worked out. I mean, in my music business days, I was doing 18, 20 hour days, you know, work just out in and of itself, plowing through. And but it, it was I was having a great time. I was in the jazz mecca, New York City, working with my heroes in the jazz clubs every night till five, wow. six o'clock. in the morning. It was great. Yeah. It just wasn't really taking care of myself too much. Wow, so uh, kind of like I said, it was always in there, just now activating it more front of front of my activation of my mind and my body and spirit and all that. Did your experience, I would imagine, did it make you question the meaning of life and your purpose in life and did, and did it help you in, it help inform? It definitely, not question, but maybe inform yeah, just, or shift, like it was a, like a major detour. Like this, I hate to use words that sound maybe new agey to people, but like I, it was a calling. Like I felt really compelled to do this bald, this beautiful thing. And I didn't know, have any idea what that was going to look like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had some photos taken and had a mission statement, slap that on the back of a headshot and kind of like, here we go. <laughs> you know, so I just didn't want to so have some new age to be like, as a calling. Oh, gosh, that put <laughs> cancer in her calling. How could she? That's hilarious. <laughs> well, because, you know, sometimes people, oh, the cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me. And it, and it sounds <laughs> weird to say that, but it, it changed my life and so much more for the better. And I feel like also, even if I was on the path to, you know, leaving this rented spacesuit on this spinning space ball, called Earth, hmm. uh, I wanted to choose how I was going to move move through it and out of this body. Like, okay, I can't control what's happening inside. I can control how I experience it and what I do with it while I'm here. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the empowering thing about it, too, is learning to do uh, things that, you know, just like lean into the fear and just move past it and not let it create walls and boundaries for myself. Beautiful. So inspiring. Definitely a pattern interrupt, that's for sure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I love that. Well, we're just honored to have you here. I think it's really important knowing that bald is beautiful, that you get to have whatever expression that is. And if I had a head yes. like yours, I would just shake <laughs> so, Well, it's sort of about having fun no matter what. If you're going right. to wear hats and scarves and wigs, like treat yourself like your own human Barbie doll and have fun. You can't cover up feeling not beautiful and ashamed. So mm -hmm. what's, that's why what I'm saying what's underneath yeah, no right. matter what. So have a sense of fun and adventure with it. I love that. Can. I love that. Keep smiling yeah. from the inside. Stay yes. tuned. We'll be back with Lauren. Good morning, Lauren.